Hello Art Beaters, Becky here with a new video and I hope you enjoy. If you want to keep up to date on all things Art Beads, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel right now. Enjoy! Got some really beautiful new earring findings this week. Hi Carolyn, good to see you. Yay! Love seeing all of your comments. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Ooh, Missy is making a lot of prayer beads and bracelets and branching out into other jewelry. Really interested in wiring techniques. Oh, I'm thinking about doing a little bit of simple wire wrapping today with while making some new earrings, so stay tuned for that. Yay! So yeah, we've got lots of wonderful new earring findings um, this week in a variety of finishes. We've got um, sterling silver, gold filled, and rose gold filled. So um, click the link in my video description. I've got a link to all of the new earring findings there. Uh, really pretty ones. And I thought all of these new earring findings was a great opportunity for just talking about all of the different um, earring findings we offer and um, some earring inspiration from our design studio, kind of showcasing those different earring components. Um, so let's see, let's dive into these beautiful new earring findings. We've got some really great new hoops. I love a hoop earring and these are really nice. They're simple hoops, but the wire is kind of flattened toward the end. So that's a really nice, elegant look. And um, really easy here at the top to open and close. There's just a little loop that the wire fits into. So this you can just stick right in your ear and you can wear them as is. They're really sophisticated with that flattened look at the end. But you can also decorate them with dangles, um, maybe seed bead onto them, add some fringe, all kinds of different things you could do. Yeah, there are some great earring findings on this board today, Katora. I agree. And we have those in different sizes. This one is a really big size. Look at how shiny that wire is too. It's really beautiful. Love those big ones. So yeah, that's the great thing about these hoops is you can wear them um, just as they are and they'll look beautiful, but you can also go to town decorating them. These would be good for wire wrapping, wire working too. Um, here's some smaller ones. These are so pretty. Um, and we've got those in uh, several different finishes. Here's sterling silver, so pretty. Loving all of those. Beautiful. And then here's some really fun hoops that are a little different. These ones have like a smaller hoop attached to the inside. So it kind of makes this fun, geometric, almost crescent shape. And this one, um, it does open up here, so you can take that out and then put it back in when you're wearing them for a secure look. But these are so fun. I'm probably going to design something with these today. Um, I just love that crescent shape. I think this would be great for fringe earrings. You could definitely brick stitch around these, and I think these would be fun to fill with seed beads, wire wrapping the seed beads into that crescent shape. So that's what I'm going to attempt today um, once we take a look at all of these beautiful things. Here's another kind of hoop. This one's really fun. It has like this bead shape at the end that the end of the hoop fits into. So that's a really nice uh, finish. So when you wear it, that bead can fall um, in front of your ear, or at the back of your ear, wherever you want, and then you can add dangles or just wear it as is because that little bead adds just the right amount of decoration for some people. Again, these are available in different finishes, so that's always nice. And these are really nice. They're sterling silver, gold filled, and rose gold filled, so really high quality. So they're not going to um, irritate your ears really really nice um so we have hoops um french ear wires just ear wires are a classic choice for designing earrings um, and we have all kinds of different styles of ear wires these are a pretty uh classic versatile choice they've got just a little ball at the top of the loop and then you can use the loop to add dangles fringe what have you little charms little pendants um, so that's a really classic choice for designing earrings and we have a couple different styles with this new launch so this one features just a lovely little rhinestone at the bottom and there's no loop so you can just wear these as is um, you could even maybe wire wrap a little bead on the top if you wanted to customize them but these are pretty much ready to wear just as is and then you've got that just just that cute little 
a little sparkle on your ear. Hello, Julie. Good to see you. <laughs> Here's another one where it's uh, finished with a ball and then you're good to go. So that's a cute little um, ear. These are great for, um, I know some people like to have something in their ears all the time, especially um, I think if you have a fresh piercing, you have to keep something in your ear to keep it from closing up. So these are a good option for something like that where you need something quick um, that to keep your, uh, to keep in your ears, but you don't really have to customize it to wear it. So those are really fun too. But we do have plenty of ear wires like these with loops that you can customize how however you want so that's not an issue i also love in this launch we have some ear wires that have some components already attached like these these come with these rings already attached and i think that's so fun so again you could wear these just as they are but i would add some dangles maybe a charm um, these are so fun i love that um, they're kind of already started for you because I think that's really inspiring. Like maybe on my own, I wouldn't think of attaching these, but now that I see them here, I love them and I want to add more to them. So that's very inspiring. And what's nice about these is they look to be like they're closed, they're soldered closed. So that's really secure. So rather than um, attaching maybe something like an open jump ring, these are solid. So um, they're going to stay together nicer really pretty so we've got a couple options there love this one that's kind of more the solid uh smooth version of the last pair i showed you <laughs> julie said just send me that whole tray i know it's a really beautiful tray we've got lots of pretty things to look at love 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 these with a little heart and the heart has a cute little crystal at the bottom and i love how they hang the the heart is a little um to the side so that's really sweet again you could wear these as is i would probably add some cute little fringe maybe in pink and red colors for valentine's day so so sweet i love those super cute here's another um fun style for ear wires i love this shape i think that shape is so fun it's really easy to uh put into your ears that's why i love 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 this shape um, and it's just a fun, it's just different. It makes your earring design stand out even more because it's a simple ear wire, but the shape is really fun. So these, this is a good choice for like maybe more bold earrings, maybe long danglers. I love this shape. And again, you've got that loop at the bottom so you can add dangles, whatever you want. Super, super cute. Um, we've got some lever backs. Lever backs is another nice secure option for your earrings. So lever backs have that levered back hence the name and they open and close and that's a really uh secure option for your jewelry designs it's not gonna fall out while you're wearing them if that's something you're concerned about that little uh secure back is gonna keep them in place really nicely and this is also good for maybe heavier designs um sometimes with ear wires maybe if you're too forward heavy they could fall out but um, this is a good one for those heavier designs. And this one has a really lovely stone on the front and a loop so you can add your dangles. So, so pretty. I really like that little rhinestone on the front. That's really um, sparkly, really fun. Adds a little sophisticated touch there. So that's a really nice lever back option again we have lots of lever back options on our website lots of options for all of these different earring styles i've got a link to our um, general earring findings components page at artbeads.com so you can shop that page there's tons of options there as well and then in this launch we've got some really cool post earring options all of these down here are post earrings and there's um any kind of post your heart desires we've got speaking of hearts this cute little post earring that's shaped like a heart so you've got that simple heart shape and then a loop so you can add your charms your dangles so so sweet and so post earrings just feature a long post that fits in your ear and um, with some of these some of them come with earring backs or clutches but with some of them, you are going to want to purchase those earring backs or clutches separately to keep them secure in your ear. So uh, keep that in mind when shopping post earrings 
like those. This is a fun one. It's got kind of this tube, cylindrical tube shape. Um, super fun. You could leave that as is. Maybe fill it with epoxy clay and add a little rhinestone to the front. That would be a fun idea. And it does have the loop, so you can add dangles below that. Um, I think that would be fun to leave as is in a geometric design. You also have um, one without that loop. So you could add epoxy clay to that or resin, maybe a little bit of resin in there. That would be kind of fun. Um, all kinds of different things you could do with that interesting little design. I love this square design. So you've just got that smooth flat square and then a loop at the bottom. Again, perfect for geometric designs. So pretty. Hi, Anne. Oh, Anne Guardian of Guardian Beads is here. I've got some, I've got some earrings featuring your pieces and um, I'm going to be making some earrings a little later on. And I pulled some cute charms uh, from you for a pair of earrings that I want to make. So we do have some beautiful Guardian Beads I, uh, items to uh, use in these earrings that we're making today. So good to see you. So really fun posts. Here's those hearts again without the loop so if you just wanted a cute little plain heart you could um you could wear this as is you could add a little crystal to the front maybe your birthstone colors or um, just a favorite color maybe pink or red for valentine's day use a little epoxy adhesive to add just a tiny little crystal there um so fun i love these post earrings they feature these geometric wire shapes. So these are triangles. Um, again, you could wear them just as they are. I'm thinking add some fringe that like comes to a point to complement that triangle shape. So wonderful. Um, this one is really speaking to me. So I think just some bead fringe, seed bead fringe, coming down to a point from both sides would be really cool on that. You could even um, wire wrap some beads into the inside of that triangle. That's that's a lot of fun. Oh my goodness. There are so many options here. Um, really beautiful. This one's just a simple circle. Again, you could add fringe to that, wire wrap to the inside, um, just attach a charm or dangle with a jump ring. There's all kinds of different things to do there. And then we've got this really interesting one that features um, a little wire peg in the center. And you might be thinking what you can do with that. Well, this is the perfect little post for half-drilled beads. So we've got half-drilled pearls and we also have half-drilled finial beads. These are tiny little check glass half-drilled beads and we have them in all kinds of different colors. Um, so really great little post for um, adding some color like that. Um, and you can just glue those on. We have a video um, of how to use finial beads or half-drilled beads like that. Um, epoxy adhesive works really wonderfully for something like that. So you just stick it onto that post and you've got this really cute uh, drop of color. And we have a couple different uh, options for that. Let's see, there was another one somewhere. Oh, here, this bigger one. So we've got that in a bigger size. So that might work for something like a half-drilled pearl like I have here where you just um, stick it onto that post. So the stringing hole for a half-drilled bead only goes halfway through. So you've got a nice uh, finished look when you glue it on. It doesn't have a hole that you can see uh, from the top. So once you got it on the post, and I am having, <laughs> I'm uh, losing my beads here. At least I'm not losing my marbles, right? <laughs> you stick it on and you would use glue if you were doing this for real and allow it to dry. And then you've got this really beautiful look here. Um, so fun. So what's great about that post is you can use any color, maybe a birthstone color that you want to incorporate into your style. And again, it's got that post on the back for you to wear it as an earring. And we do have, um, one that comes with a pearl already attached. If you, um, are a fan of just that classic white look, this one comes with the pearl already attached and it comes with an earring back. So that's really nice. 
Um, so that's beautiful. But if you want to customize those colors, play around with the style a little bit. We do have the ones uh, with the post free for you to add whatever half drilled bead you like. And then um, here's another one with a pearl already attached. This is just a simple, simple pearl stud, which is you know, a staple in your jewelry box, right? <laughs> so pretty. Um, another one that I think would be fun with um, half-drilled beads is this little bar post. So I think it would be fun to do a bigger pearl at the top of this post and then a smaller pearl um, at the bottom. And then you'd have this really fun, funky, contemporary pearl design. Um, I think that'd be really pretty. So, um, and pearl jewelry, especially unique contemporary pearl jewelry, is really having a moment right now. It is definitely trending. So, um, really fun to play with those half-drilled uh, pearls and half-drilled beads with those earring findings. We've got more fun posts. This one is just a cute little beaded design and it has a loop at the bottom, but you can also opt for the one without a loop and then you just have that cute little textured a stud that's really fun there's this post with um the larger circle frame and then the smaller circle frame on the inside and that one is um you could probably put some epoxy clay in there and add a little rhinestone or you could just leave it as is maybe add a jump ring and dangle from the bottom do some uh wire wrapping there's all kinds of different things you could do with that that's really fun so lots, lots, lots of fun uh, earring post styles and, of course, hoops and ear wires and lever backs, um, all kinds of pretty things. Isn't that a fun little heart shape? So cute. And again, remember when you're um, working with those post earrings, you may want to stock up on those earring backs and clutches, which you can find on our earring components page that I have um, added a link to in the video description. Oh, and I wanted to show these because these are really sparkly and pretty. We've got some really fun little rhinestone posts with a little loop on the bottom. So sparkly, so fun. And you can get those without the loop if you just want the little stud too. So really lovely. Loving that. So there's all kinds of beautiful new um, earring components in wonderful finishes like gold filled, sterling silver, and rose gold filled. So make sure to uh, click that link in our video description to see all of those new um, earring components. But I thought all of these beautiful new earring components gives me a great chance to talk about um, all of those different earring uh, findings and how you can use them in your jewelry design. Somebody asked, um, how do you choose the right earring findings for your design? And that really depends on what look you're going for. So these examples are um, from our design studio. So hopefully this helps you when you're designing your earrings. They're all available with free instructions and supplies lists. And I have to say thank you, Steve, for all 500 stars. That's awesome. Thank you. No, you rock. <laughs> thank you guys so much for sending stars. Okay, so I wanted to kind of start with some inspiration for the um, just simple ear wires. I mentioned that this shape was really a favorite of mine. So it's classic simple ear wires, but with a twist because of that fun uh, bold, bold shape. So this is really great for some of those bolder earrings. You can see that we've got some really fun uh, big nautilus beads here that really matches that shape of the ear wire well. Um, I love the colors in this one too. So pretty. So I'm loving these kind of ear wires for maybe bolder pieces like that, especially just that long single dangle too, I think looks really good uh, with that shape. So, so pretty. Oh, I love the colors on that one. Um, I think that's the fun thing about classic ear wires is all of the different fun shapes that you can find them in. So this shape is really angular and I thought that was kind of cool with the um, hexagon drop that I used here. So that's why I kind of went with this ear wire that has a more angular shape because I thought it complemented all of the angles on that hex drop there really nicely. Um, so fun. And I did a little bit of mixing of metals here. Really beautiful. 
Um, we've got some nice uh, rounded loopy ones. Uh, so these are more classic than the other ones that I showed you. Just a really nice, elegant swoop shape. And I thought that worked really well with the rounded, almost bubble swoop shape of this component. Um, and then I just added a little bit of bead links chain to attach that cute lotus charm. So the shapes really, the shapes of the ear wire and the shapes of the components I used really complement each other well. So that's why I chose this shape for these earrings. Um, another thing that I love about classic ear wires is you can get ear wire blanks. So ear wire blanks come with um, just a long straight wire at the end. There's no loop, it's just long and straight. And that is so you can add your own bead and then finish with a loop. Uh, so you can kind of incorporate the colors of your design into the actual ear wire. So that's what I did here in these earrings. I used a pearl that I used down here at the top of the ear wire. So I threaded it onto the ear, ear wire blank, and then I made a simple loop. And you can also finish with a wrapped loop if you have enough wire. So that's a really nice option um, when you're shopping for ear wires. Those ear wire blanks allow you to add whatever bead you want um, above your loop to kind of complement the colors and the beads that you have in the rest of your design. Um, so that's a really nice option for uh, designing earrings. So that's really fun. Um, another option that I like in classic ear wires and other ear earring components too is the sparkle texture. It just adds something a little different. So these are sparkle ear wires and you can see that they're textured in a way that just sparkles. <laughs> So I thought this was a wonderful option for uh, something like these Christmas tree earrings because what do you think when you think of a Christmas tree, you think of all the sparkling pretty lights and I've got a really fun um, kind of multicolored finish here on these crystals. And so I thought the sparkle texture of the ear wires really complemented um, that sparkling feeling of a Christmas tree. And it's classic and kind of antique looking nostalgic, uh, really pretty. So I thought the sparkle ear wire was a good choice um, for all the sparkle of a Christmas tree. So sweet. <laughs> yeah, so I just love, I use the classic ear wires a lot. If you're trying to stock up uh, your bead stash to make sure you have um, components on hand for whenever you feel like designing, I always go for classic ear wires in a couple different shapes. So um, I have something on hand if I feel like spontaneously designing earrings. How do they feel in your ear? They feel fine. Um, they're not so textured that it's going to like rub or, um, or like kind of like go against your skin. Um, it's just a little bit of texture for that sparkle effect. It's actually quite smooth when you feel it, but there's just enough there to create that sparkling look. So really beautiful. Um, and then here's another example of those kind of bigger classic round ear wires. This is one of my favorite pairs of earrings that I've made. Um, I used big geometric shapes. We've got the Nun Design hoops and Nun Design triangles. Um, again, that round big shape of the hoop really works well with that round big shape of the ear wire. Um, favorite, favorite earrings. You can wear these with anything. <laughs> So beautiful. Um, hoops. Let's look at some hoop inspiration. Hoops, you can get the classic rounds, but there's also some other really fun shapes you can go with too. So these are some hoops that um, they're not full hoops. So you put this through your ear and then you can use an ear wire to keep it in your ear. And then you've got that end there to keep uh, any beads you add in place. So this is a really fun design. I think that's really um, modern and cool. And I love that you can just slide on beads like this or a pendant. This one is a little pendant here. Uh, this one's kind of an interchangeable look. So um, if you wanted to maybe use different colors one day, you could take those beads off, add some new ones. 
maybe go back to this color if you uh, wanted to wear them like this again. Uh, really kind of an interchangeable look if you just slide beads on um, or take the beads off and just wear them plain. So that's a really fun hoop design as well. Um, you can definitely brick stitch or macrame around hoops. This is a cord uh, micro macrame with some beads onto the hoop. That's really pretty. So you have a lot of options with color and uh, bead style there. So really fun. Love those. Uh, you can brick stitch around hoops. So this one is um, just a hoop component brick stitched and then um, the beads are brick stitched around the hoop and then there was a classic ear wire added to the top, but you could definitely employ these techniques with a hoop like this. So just brick stitch around the bottom half and then embellish to your heart's desire. Really fun option for hoops uh, with the brick stitch. And you can wire wrap around those hoops. That's another um, great option. So this is fire polished beads just simply coiled or wrapped around the edge of the hoop. Again, this is just a, a hoop component attached to an ear wire, but you could certainly do the same for a hoop earrings. <laughs> what cord did you use on the hoop earrings? Um, we do have it listed in the supplies list. I don't know what cord this is off the top of my head, uh, but you could use um, a variety of different cords to create uh, different effects if you're going to macrame onto the hoop. And then you can um, wire wrap within the hoop as well, which is something I did here. I kind of made cute little patterns by wire wrapping the beads into the hoop. So there's all kinds of different things you can do uh, with those fun hoop earrings. And again, we have some really fun hoop earring shapes as well. These Nun Design hoops are some of my favorite. So elegant and beautiful on their own. I just added a little drop and you're good to go. These are done in seconds and you have just the most stylish pair of earrings. Dee, thank you so much for sending 100 stars. That is so sweet of you. Um, really beautiful. Love this shape. I've used it a couple times. Here's another fun uh, hoop shape that's a blast to wire wrap around. This pair features some really sparkly bicones just wrapped around the edge of that really cool earring shape. So pretty. <laughs> and then um, the same shape with some dagger beads wrapped on to the end. And somebody just asked a question. Let's see, is that a spacer bead at the top of the wire wrapped hoop? Uh, this is a, um, so this is actually a guru bead that's kind of used the opposite of how you would normally use a guru bead. So guru beads are usually used like at the center of a necklace this way to attach a tassel, usually in mala style necklaces. But here it was added to the top of the hoop so we could use the loop to attach the ear wire. So really unique way to use um, that guru bead. Great question. Um, and then add whatever ear wire you like with that. <laughs> Let's see. And I think that's um, all of my fun uh, ear wire or ear hoop shapes. We've got some more traditional earring hoops over here. Um, really great for just adding a quick dangle. I added some fun check glass beads and tassels to this one. I love this pair of earrings. So fun. I love hoop earrings. I always gravitate toward them. They're just, there's something about them that I love. And this, uh, these hoop earrings just have that wonderful little loop at the bottom so you can add whatever you like. Um, I used these gorgeous garden beads enameled uh, circle pendants because I thought that that shape really complemented the hoop nicely and so simple. You just add, uh, add your pendants with a couple jump rings and you've got, I mean, this is so stylish, so chic and comes together in seconds. Uh, so beautiful. Love that pair of earrings too. Here's an example for how to use those lever back earrings. So like I said before, lever backs are great for maybe those longer or heavier uh, earring designs that you're worried may fall out of your ear. Use those lever backs because you've got that nice secure uh, lever backing on the back of the earring. They're not going to fall out of your ear. So I use them in these <laughs> really long, really fabulous uh, crystal dangle earrings inspired by red carpet jewelry 
that I made. Um, so beautiful. They're really long and dangly. And they look like they'd be really heavy, but they're not as heavy as you would think. Um, so nice to have those lever backs for extra security, but, um, they're not going to weigh you down. So really pretty. I love all of the sparkly beads in these. So fun. Oh, here's another hoop. I love these hoops. Uh, another hoop example with just cute little beaded dangles added. <laughs> and I love these. They're like little man in the moon, man in the moon beads. So cute. Um, chandeliers. I wanted to talk about chandeliers because, um, while chandelier or link components are not necessarily, uh, for earrings, you can use them for other kinds of jewelry designs. Chandeliers are quite popular, um, in earrings. Uh, so this would be an example of a chandelier component. It's got multiple loops at the bottom, so you can add a chandelier <laughs> of dangles. Um, and these are really pretty, uh, chain uh with chain at the top and then um nice little fire polished and pearl chandelier dangles at the bottom so chandelier components are really popular for earrings and we do have a whole section for chandeliers on our earring findings page that you can shop and find the perfect ones for your earrings so fun um, we also have beautiful post earrings that you can shop from this is an example of post earrings um, love all the different post styles that we have this one i chose because it really matches the kind of bohemian look i've got going here for these earrings i thought um the kind of star textured sun pattern up here uh, really complemented that wide fan tassel and all the texture on this component really nicely. Um, so really fun post there. These earrings too feature a fun post shape. It's got a lotus post. Oh, great point, Lynn. Leverback earrings, let me scroll back up to your comment, have been great when wearing a mask because they won't get pulled off like the French ear wires. That's such a good idea, Lynn. I've been, I've kind of been avoiding ear, wearing earrings because you have to wear masks everywhere because they do kind of interfere with your mask but that's a great idea to wear the lever back earrings with your mask oh that's such a good idea i never thought of that great tip lynn lever back earrings great for mask wearing <laughs> wonderful um this is another example of a post earring but it's actually um a bezel post so it comes uh with this empty channel that you can fill with resin or epoxy clay like we did here we created an epoxy clay dome and decorated it with crystals um wonderful so pretty so that's another option for creating completely custom earring designs with your post earrings. So, so wonderful. Um, another earring type is ear threaders. Ear threaders are really cool. So they're kind of like post earrings. They've got a long post at the back, but then they've got uh, usually a good length of like box chain or regular chain, different chain styles. And that means you can thread them through your ear and adjust the length. So once you get that post through your ear, you can pull as long or as short as you like. And they look really trendy. I just love that kind of long, dangly look of them. And you can make them as long or as short as you like. So you could pull this all the way up to your ear and you'd have a really short heart earring or leave them long and you've got these really fun, long, dangling uh, design. Super fun. So I just added a little heart charm to the bottom of these with uh, some color. You could add your birthstone color or um, any of your favorite colors. I love that. And they make it so easy to make super stylish looks. So for these earrings, um, I just added a tear cast charm to the bottom of this ear threader and it looks so stylish, so chic done in seconds. That's what I love about earrings. Earrings are some of my favorite things to make because they're so quick to make and they just look beautiful and you can throw them on with any outfit. Uh, earrings are one of my favorites. And then um, another thing I wanted to mention was ear cuffs. Um, so these, this is an ear cuff. This is a spiderweb themed ear cuff. Um, what's cool about these is they go um, on the side of your like earlobe. So you would wear this 
pinch it around your earlobe, and then this is an earring post that you would put into the actual piercing of your ear. So you can create a really cool kind of swaggy chain looks with these. Uh, super fun. This is a Halloween themed ear cuff and post, but you could do all kinds of different looks with those ear cuffs. And we have um, quite a few available. I think we just got in a sterling silver fairy ear cuff not too long ago. I'd love to uh, make something magical with that. So um, all kinds of earring uh, styles that you can go for. All of these earrings are in our design studio with free instructions and a supplies list and we've got so many different earring components to choose from. And I did want to mention if your ears are not pierced, um, we do have the um, the screw on and clip earrings that uh, you can wear if your ears aren't pierced. We've got options for everyone. Um, we have a, we do have a few uh, clip on and screw on earring components that you can try if you don't have pierced ears. So there's something for everyone. So that's really good. Um, so fun. So let's let's make some earrings with some of these new components. I know I want to use these. I definitely want to make some earrings with these. This is one of my favorite ear wire shapes. And then I'm thinking that I want to use one of these because they're just so fun and I love that they've got the hoops already attached. So let's start there. I've got this empty board so we can design with them. So fun. So let's start. Um, I've got something super easy for the um, for these guys. I'm going to just add some fun nun design charms because we've got these new gold nun design charms, and I'm going to make them a little uh, mismatched. So we've got the same shape of charm here, but a little different. This one has some like leafy branchy design, and this one has like a flowery tulip design. So I'm just going to add those to the ends of the ear wire with some jump rings. So let's see, I've got jump rings right here. <laughs> um, what are you guys working on this weekend? Any fun jewelry projects? I've been cross-stitching this week, actually. I just finished up one of my cross-stitch projects that I've been working on. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a Christmas gift. <laughs> but six months later, I finally finished it. <laughs> That's how it goes when you make handmade presents. They are never finished on time. Uh, but I'm so glad I finished that one. And now I'm working on um, a Christmas project uh, to make a cute little Christmas pillow. Uh, Cross-stitch Christmas pillow. So that's what I'm working on. So hopefully I'll get that one done in time for, for next Christmas. So cute. I love it. So I just used a jump ring. Uh, to add this uh, charm and we will add the other charm to the other one. So as you can see, super easy to just add a cute little charm using a jump ring. I just open the jump ring, add the charm, and you do, when you're uh, designing with earrings, you want to make sure that you kind of hold it up to see how the earring will actually look when worn. Um, so I might actually need to use two jump rings to get these charms to hang right, but for right now I'm just going to use the one jump ring so you can just see how easy it is to add whatever dangle or charm you like. Working on chain mail. Ooh, so fun. So um, our, our local Renaissance Fair is going to be happening uh, this August, and I'm so excited. Chain mail would be perfect for that. Super cute. So super easy just to add a cute little charm to these earrings. And then you've got uh, something super stylish. And I love that they're a little mismatched. From far away, they're going to look the same. But then once you get up close, uh, I think it will draw the eye to have something a little bit matchy but not matchy. Um, super cute. So that's super easy. Um, and then with these, I had I thought I would do something with... Um, I've got some really pretty copper, copper fire polish, and I've got these cute little sand dollar guardian beads charms. Since it is uh, almost summer, we've got to be thinking about the beach, right? Uh, so I've got some matching jump rings. Let's make some beaded links for these because I love making long beaded links for my earrings, especially when you have a fun shape 
like that. And um, these fire polished beads match the rose gold findings so perfectly. And we've got some cute little flower beads as well. Fun. So um, I just love making all kinds of earrings. They come together so quickly. My cutters are all the way over here on the other side of my office. There we go. Got them. So let's get our pretty beads all laid out. I love the color of these. And I've got links to all of these uh, beads and charms that I'm using here in the video description if you guys are interested in these. Um, I found some really fun pieces to play with today. And I'm thinking of doing a, um, a live video tomorrow, just a beading party. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. Um, we could just create together, hang out, talk, uh, share, share inspiration with each other. I think a, a little beading party tomorrow um, on Facebook Live would be a lot of fun. So let me know if you'd like to see that and what you would like to see me create. Um, always love uh, inspiration when it comes to creating. So let's make a cute little... Just a little simple loop, and I do have my one-step looper. It's my favorite tool. Um, so you can make a, one, a simple loop with your chain nose and round nose pliers, but ooh, I love my one-step looper. It makes it so easy, so I will show you how cool this tool is. So all you do is thread that wire through the holes in the tool, get your bead nice and up there, and then squeeze. And look how easy that is. It makes a simple loop like that. And I like to go in and close it up all nice and secure. It even trims your wire for you. There you go. You've got a cute little simple loop. <laughs> so I definitely want that in there. And I'm thinking, make a little simple loop here. Ooh, I know. <laughs> oh, it sounds like you guys want a beading party tomorrow. Who doesn't want a beading party on a Friday? Yeah, half tila beads, that's a great idea. Ooh, I have some good ideas for half tila beads. I love half tila beads. Um, yeah, I will definitely add that in. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use a couple copper beads here and then make my simple loop. Close it up. Oh, that's pretty too. Oh, I love it. So let's do another one of those. Those copper beads are so fun. They're just so bright and shiny. Love that. I love that one step looper. That tool is definitely check that out if you haven't because it is just it's a game changer for real okay yes love that look so pretty so let's uh connect it all i'll just i think i'll need a jump ring for the sand dollar at the bottom but the rest i think i can just use the loops to connect so let's open that up yeah, I really like these flower beads. They're a really nice small size and the pink color is just so sweet. I'm definitely in a pink mood today because I've got my kind of dusty pink shirt on. <laughs> it's funny how color kind of seeps into your subconscious on some days. And it definitely starts with what clothes I'm wearing that day. And then I kind of gravitate toward that color all day. Wonderful. Okay, let's add the next little beaded link that we made. Do, 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 do. I love making earrings. It's one of my favorite things. Every time I see like new items at Art Beads, I'm like, ooh, earrings. <laughs> so sometimes I kind of have to uh, think outside of the earring box and make some necklaces and bracelets because it can't just all be earrings all the time. But if it were up to me, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your guys' favorite uh, jewelry type to make? Is it earrings? Is it necklaces? Bracelets? Rings, maybe? I love wearing rings, but I hardly ever make them. But I do love a good seed bead ring project. Oh, that's cute. And then we'll just add our little sand dollar at the bottom. 
So what I like about this charm is uh, sand dollars can sometimes naturally have those openings, and so that's what you use um, to add your jump ring. So that's a really fun uh, design on those. Add it to the loop. Ta-da! Beautiful. I love that. So we've got some cute sand dollar, beachy, flowery earrings. So perfect for summer. It's got that copper sparkle. So, so pretty. I love these. Um, so I can make another one to match that. But I did want to share um, how to do some wire wrapping. I think these are a really fun shape for wire wrapping. And I have, um, since they kind of have like a moon shape, I kind of picked like this moon glow color. <laughs> Beautiful. Pam likes stringing necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. Yeah. <laughs> I like it all. Um, so I've got some 26 gauge artistic wire that I'm going to use. Um, really nice thin gauge to wrap with, and I think it'll work really well with those small little seed beads. And I'm just going to pull off um, a nice long length of wire here. Um, so really easy to start. You just kind of coil your wire around um, the outside edge of that, of the earring. And it, and it can be a little squirrely when you're trying to get it started here. So I'm going to kind of coil that end around my short end around but then I'm going to keep coiling with the long end too just so I have a really uh, good start and I'm going to start I'm going to kind of adjust this to see where I can add my first seed bead and then go from there so this is a really easy wire wrapping technique, just kind of coiling around the wire. I'm going to kind of push it down here because it's easier to get that wire through that larger gap. So I've decided to push it up here because as you can see, coiling the wire up here, it's kind of filling that narrower gap up there. And I'm gonna make sure, actually, I'm gonna make sure that this end is tucked in so it's not poking out. There, so I've kind of tucked my short end to the back of the frame. And so I'm gonna push it up there and that makes a nice little start for my wire wrapping, and then I'm gonna start adding beads here. Woo! And it's, um, before you get all the beads added, it's kinda gonna slide around. <laughs> so let's add one seed bead to the wire. And I really like the seed bead color because the stringing hole kind of has a golden color that shines through. Um, so that's really fun kind of matches the gold finish and that looks like a good place to start it and I'm going to use my pliers to bring that through so I kind of slid my wire down to a place where um, I could start adding the bead and it fits really well there and so I'm bringing my wire around that inner frame now and I'm going to coil that around there a couple times and when you're working in tight spaces like this uh, sometimes your pliers can help you uh, direct direct your wire pretty so 
So I've got the wire kind of coiled a couple times around that inner frame. So now I'm going to pull it so it's coming between the two frames so I can add another bead. And as you go, you're going to want to add more beads. I think for now I'll just add one more bead because I think that's how many can fit between the frame so far. But when you get to the wider points of the frame, you're going to be adding uh, more beads. Yeah, so still just one bead. Yes, I'm using 26 gauge artistic wire. You could probably use 24 gauge, but I wanted something a little more flexible. 26 gauge is working pretty well so far. Okay, and I've coiled it around. How long is my piece of wire? I cut a good two feet, um, and that's going to be plenty, I think. You want to make sure to go longer because you are wrapping and coiling, and depending on how intricate you're going to go, you're going to want to make sure you give yourself enough, enough wire. And I'm kind of adjusting how my beads uh, lay between those frames because I want them to line up nicely. So bring that wire back through. I've got the seed beads linked uh, in my video description if you like them. They are Toho seed beads, 11 aught, and they are a perma-finish silver-lined milky cloud color. <laughs> and the code is TBRD11-PF2101. So that's the code for these beads, but I do have a link uh, in the video description. Okay, so I think I can add two seed beads at this point. So let's put two seed beads onto the wire and see how that works. Yeah, that looks good. So this works up pretty quickly. And then you would just keep going. So I've got two seed beads there. So cute. And you can add all kinds of different beads. Small little um, fire polished beads would look really pretty. You could use, um, these are round seed beads. You could use maybe uh, treasures or icos that have a more cylinder shape. Um, all kinds of different things. Maybe some cute little two millimeter pearls. So let's see, I think maybe just two more on this row will work. And the great thing about wire is you can kind of tweak it as you go. So you can kind of see like my rows are a little wonky now, but as I add more rows, I can adjust them, straighten them out. Um, it's really uh, forgiving. You can adjust it a lot as you work, which is what I like about it. <laughs> I like to be able to adjust and tweak as I work. And this is a really basic technique. There are some really amazing uh, wire wrapping techniques and a really amazing wire artists out there that just do incredible things with their wire. Um, so definitely check those out. Um, there's all kinds of inspiration out there. And you can use your um, pliers too to kind of, if you want to get your coils nice and tight and clean together, just kind of use your pliers to pinch them together and tighten up your coils. So I think maybe I can add three there. So let's try and add three. One, two. Sometimes these little seed beads are staticky and they like stick to each other's sides. Oh, and I just spilled two of them off, so I gotta do it again. Two, and then th 
three. There we go. Okay, we've got three seed beads on there, so let's see how that works. Hmm. Three is a little too much, so I think I'll stick with two until the next row. So that's really all you have to do is just keep coiling and wrapping your wire around and then you'll eventually fill that whole shape up with pretty seed beads. So now I'm thinking I can add three. Let's try three here. And I'm kind of alternating, um, adding the beads to the front and adding the beads to the back of the frame. So just keep that in mind when you're coiling your wire. Um, if you want to keep them all to the front or if you want to keep them all to the back, uh, keep that in mind when you're adding, adding beads. I think another row of three. It's got a very like bohemian feel to it, I think. It's really fun. One, two, three. Get all those beans down there. And then wrap. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going, adding those seed beads into that crescent shape. And um, I've got 11 aughts here. 15 aughts might even be better. You can get into those uh, tight spaces a little more, uh, fill it up a little more. But um, I'm kind of liking that, that like bohemian texture look that these 11 aught beads are creating. So that's all you have to do to kind of fill your... Um, fill frames like this with beads uh, using wire. Um, another thing that you could do is use thread, especially if you were thinking of brick stitching around the edge and adding fringe, you could use thread to add seed beads uh, between those spaces as well. But I'm gonna keep going with those, um, with, the, with, the, with these seed beads all the way down and then I'll have a fun little crescent shaped design there. Oh, these seed beads are so pretty. I just love the colors. Aren't they so fun? Gorgeous. Um, so that's, that's just a really easy uh, wire wrapping technique that you can use to fill bead frames like that. And again, you can use that technique with all kinds of different uh, bead frames. You can use it here um, with bigger beads um, to fill up space in bigger frames. Um, on these, I'm just kind of going like straight back and forth. On these, I kind of curved the wire to create little like spiral patterns, curvy patterns. So really you can have fun with it and go to town and do all kinds of different things. So here's the same kind of basic technique, 
with um, dagger beads dangling down and some fire polished beads. So really fun to use wire and beads to fill up your hoop spaces. Okay, well, I just made, uh, started some earring designs really quick here. You can see how easy it is to get started with earrings and really have fun with those different earring components shape. So uh, make sure to check out those new earring findings. We have all kinds of new pretty ones. I'll show you my tray again so you can see just how many options you have. So many. And of course, we have even more uh, options on our earring findings page as a whole. So don't miss that. I've got links to everything in my video description. And I